Well, good evening. Hey, it is so good to see all of you come out here this evening. We're excited that you chose to spend your night before Easter with us and to celebrate Holy Week and what Jesus accomplished on the cross and what he accomplished when he rose from the dead. And so we're so happy that you're here. We want to welcome you this evening. And we believe that God has something special for you and that you're really going to be ministered to through this production. And uh, we have a couple of announcements that we'd like to make. For the restrooms, they are actually located in the lobby when you came through the doors. We do ask that no one go through this door. And if you do need to exit, be very careful of the aisleways because there are going to be some actors that will come in and out of the aisles. And so we, we don't want anyone stepped on by accident. That would be horrible, wouldn't it? <laughs> but we have so many ministers here that can uh, just lay hands on you and pray for you. and You'll be okay. But speaking of the ministers, if you are a pastor of a church or a minister, we would like for you to stand and be recognized right now. Yes. We want to thank you all for coming. Yes. And if you're here and you don't have a regular church that you attend, you saw all those pastors, so find one of them. Find, find out where, they, they go, where their church is and, and get plugged in and, and get yourself into a good church. Because there's nothing like the support of other brothers and sisters in the Lord helping you on your Christian journey. Amen? And all the pastors especially said, Amen. yes, they, they like that. And he didn't charge, I didn't charge him anything to say that. That was perfectly free. I really am excited about this production. We've been working very hard for the last several months, and we've got some uh, great people that have pulled together in several churches. Isn't it great when you can see many churches from the community, different denominations, coming together to put on a production like this? I think that is wonderful. It is. So if you have little ones, we want to let you know, if they get restless and uh, start to get a, a little loud or um, upset, we do ask that you utilize our nursery room, and then when they are um, no longer being restless, feel free to bring them back in. And speaking of the little ones, I want to let you know that if you open your program and you look where it says the songs, there's a song called It Was His Blood. We will have the screens down and we're going to be showing scenes from the Passion of the Christ. And so they're a little graphic. So if that is something that you wouldn't want your kids to see, then uh, please be aware of that and, and use whatever measures you need to, whether it's to close their eyes or, or feel free to take them out at that time. Um, but we're so glad you're here. Cell phones, thank you. I've got several people flashing their cell phones at me. Make sure you turn your cell phones off and be blessed tonight. Are you ready to go to the Lord in prayer? All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for what you are doing in this area and in West Virginia. God, we thank you for each and every cast member and crew member that have come together to provide this production to spread the good news. God, we ask that each and every person that is here this evening and those that are watching on TV or on YouTube, that they would be ministered to and that their hearts would be ready to receive the message that God has for them tonight. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. So on behalf of the Way of Holiness Church and Pastor Jerry Merle, we want to welcome you to Journey to the Cross.
am not skilled to understand what God has willed, what God has planned. I only know at his right hand stands one who is my Savior. you. My name is John, and yes, it is heavy. Well, would you like to put it down and come and join us? Well, I'd like to. It is heavy. Sometimes it's unbearable, but I'm afraid I can't. See, I'm going somewhere, someplace, and I know if I put this bag down, I never want to pick it back up again, so. Well, you could put it down for a little while before you go on, but you're welcome to, to join us. Well, thank you, but, uh, Where's everyone going? We're headed back to the cross where our Savior Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Oh, I see. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of him. He, he can't help me. But haven't you, haven't you met him? Have you? Well, I'm not a Christian. Is that what you're saying? But how would you know? Well, <laughs> you just seem to be carrying a heavy weight around similar to that backpack you're carrying right now. Listen. Those of us who've met Jesus, 
We no longer have to go around with such heaviness everywhere we go. We just leave it at his cross. Why don't you go with us? You don't understand. I don't think Jesus would want me there, okay? As a matter of fact, I know he wouldn't because you don't know how bad my life has been, George. I messed something up badly. Listen. Look, and I know if I go there, I'll be ashamed of him to see me. John, all of us have felt that way at some point in our lives. All of us have sinned and had the junk in our lives that we just drag around until Jesus convinced us to leave it at his cross. Really? You seem so free. How could you, I can't even imagine how your life would ever be like mine. <laughs> Woo, you wouldn't have recognized me back then. What I carried, the guilt and the shame, I was so angry and tired. Listen, you're no different than any of us here. Every one of us has turned to him for forgiveness. Have you ever heard about the woman that Jesus met at the well of Samaria? Her life was like mine in so many ways, rejected and used. <laughs> I was rebellious and disobedient to what God wanted for my life. But like her, Jesus knew it all. And I was forgiven of everything I had ever done. Yes. She came thirsty, the woman at the well, a soul in search of answers, crying out for help. The stranger saw the longing deep within it, and told.
Oh, excuse me. Well, that's okay. Are, are you in a hurry? Well, not really. I just have a lot on my mind. I guess I wasn't paying any attention. Sorry about that. No problem. My name's Brad. I'm Tom. Nice to meet you. So, where are you guys headed? I'm glad you asked. We're on our way to worship at the cross where Jesus died for our sins. Oh, yeah? See, I was saved as a kid, but I haven't been active in church in years. I've been busy building my career, you know. Yes, I do know. I used to put work in the place of everything else in my life until the old briefcase, well, it became my God. <laughs> you sound like my wife. I mean, my ex-wife. She left me years ago. To be honest, my work is pretty much all I have left. I was headed down the same path until I decided to lay it all down and give it to Jesus. I made it a priority to place him and his will first in my life. I've not been the same since. I'm so much happier now. God has really blessed my family and my career. See, I would like to do that, but honestly, I wouldn't know where to begin. Jesus seems so far away at this point. You know, that reminds me of a story from the Bible about Zacchaeus. Who? Oh, the wee little man? <laughs> yeah, the wee little man. He was a tax collector, dedicated to his work, but he probably wasn't liked very much. He was determined to find Jesus and some meaning for his own life. Jesus found him up in a tree, and his life was changed forever. I hope you'll join us on this journey. I have a feeling you'll find what's been missing in your life, a sense of fulfillment that that briefcase cannot truly offer. Yeah.
Well, hey, darling. Thank you. Where are you headed? Oh, just coming from the doctor's office. Seems like that's all I get to do these days. I thought I'd just come outside for some fresh air and pray. Well, would you mind if I prayed with you? Well, sure, honey. You can't get too much prayer now, can you? Well, actually, no, you can't. <laughs> I wouldn't have survived the last couple of years without prayer. Well, what was wrong? What happened? Well, I just recently overcame cancer through the healing touch of Jesus. Wow. It wasn't long ago when I laid in a bed fighting for my life. And I, too, needed help up the steps as I would crawl when I wouldn't let anybody help me. And I would have horrible episodes of sickness where I could barely breathe. But in between each breath I could take, I would cry out, thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Thank you for healing me. So you would actually thank him before he was feeling well? Yes, because I believed that when Jesus died on the cross, he paid for my healing as well as my <clears throat> salvation. Did you ever question, though, whether God really wanted to heal you or not? Yeah. <laughs> I questioned everything mm. all the time when through my pain and my frustration and my fear. I thought, God, why me? I've served you my entire life and now I'm so tired, I just wanna give up. Mm. But then God sent a saint to tell me to take him at his word. You see, it wasn't God that needed reminded of his promises that he made to me. It was me. Mm. I needed reminded of those promises every day. The Bible says that by his stripes we are healed. You see, I was already healed. I had already won. He already paid the price. And do you know at my last doctor's appointment, I was declared cancer free? Well, praise <laughs> God. That's awesome. And that's why I'm headed back to the cross with my friends to praise him and to thank him for what he's done for me there. Would you like to go with us? Yes. Yes, I would. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs>
Just came back from basketball practice. Well, looks like you're listening to some pretty lit music. <laughs> uh, lit? Yeah, isn't that what you young people are saying these days? No one says that anymore. They say, fire now. Oh, fire, I like that. Mm. <laughs> so, what's going on here anyway? Well, some of us are headed back to the cross. Our Savior gave his life for us. Cool. I go to church sometimes, but right uh -huh. now, I just want to have fun, play sports, and live life. My grandpa calls it sowing my wild oats. <laughs> Look, I like sports too, but you know, you can serve God and have fun. I don't know. I just figured I'd put all the religious stuff off till I'm older. You don't have to wait until you're older to start following God's plan for your life. His plan? Yeah, his plan. The Bible says, before I knew you, I formed you in the womb. And the Bible also says, I love this. <laughs> I set you apart for me before you were born. Listen, I believe God has a plan for your life right now. For real? Ah, these kids, for real? <laughs> Listen. When Jesus was choosing his disciples, there was one by the name of John. Come to think of it, he was not much older than you are right now. John accomplished a lot for the kingdom of God. He wrote several books of the Bible. He was the longest living disciple. He had a brother named James. They were mighty men of God. <laughs> but Jesus called them the sons of thunder. Jesus is pretty cool, isn't he? <laughs> Why don't you go on this journey with us? I really believe that Jesus wants to speak to your heart about his plan for your life. Think about it.
get that for you. No, I can manage it. Don't touch it. I I'm just trying to help you. I don't need help. I've gotten this far with it. I don't need help from you or anyone. Well, at least here, take a breather for a minute. My name's Sam. Can I get you a water or something? Why are you so interested? I'm just trying to be a friend. What's your name? It's Deidre. Well, hi, Deidre. Are you, like, going on a trip or something? I don't know where I'm headed. All I know is I just had to leave. My whole life's summed up here in this old suitcase, and... Seems like you're uh, struggling with some things. <laughs> you think? Besides, what do you know about it? Hey, I've been where you are. We've all been where you are. We all carry around baggage and bundles that we just have to leave behind. Leave behind? Where? <laughs> Deidre, at the cross of Jesus Christ. That's where he invites everybody to come and leave their sins yeah. and the things of this world that weigh them down. Why would I want to visit such a horrible, bloody place? What possible good could come from that? Hey, let me tell you, the truth is, it was his innocence and his perfection that made him worthy to pay the price for our sins. He became the sacrifice that died for us. That's why we return there. We return to remember every moment of his suffering and to remember that our sins caused what he had to go through. He suffered and died so that we don't have to spend eternity in hell. We go to remind ourselves of the incredible debt that we owe him for what he did for us. Continue with us. He walked a road I couldn't understand. He turned his back on wealth and fame. Gave up a throne to follow love's command. And I'm amazed to know the reason Jesus came. Cause someone had to die so we could live. When we needed something only he could give. Was his blood, it was his suffering that paid the price that only Christ could pay for you and me. It wasn't riches or kingdoms that proved his love, it was his cross, it was his crown. Was his blood. He could have painted, I love you across the sky with every stroke in scarlet red. could have made creation testify and found a million ways to say those words instead but the only way that could have set me free was the one who chose that day at Calvary it was his blood that only Christ can pay for you and me. It wasn't riches or kingdoms that moved his love. It was his cross. It was 
from your life and you just walk away <laughs> in a way yes Deidre Jesus wants to be the Lord of our lives he wants to take away our sin and make us whole he willingly laid down his life so that we could have life and have it more abundantly but I've lived a horrible life what I carry it's terrible he knows exactly what's in your past and what burdens you're carrying. It was all laid on him when he hung on the cross. Jesus took on the entire sin of the whole world. And listen, it will be a shame for you to leave here with such a heavy burden. All of the guilt and the pain when Jesus is willing to take it from you. We're almost there. All of you. It's only at the cross where you will find purpose, fulfillment, and peace. Continue with us. Let's go see how much he really loves us. But you don't, you don't understand. I'm not like any of you. I'm, t I'm not good. I'm not religious. Frankly, my life is a mess. <laughs> my life was a mess before I met Jesus, too. You can't imagine what I was like. And my life was worthless before Jesus. I didn't realize how much I needed him. I know I need a change in my life. I want that kind of peace and purpose. Yeah. Me too. Well, I want to go. But I don't want to go like this. I'm too ashamed. You know what? Let me work on myself first. Get myself straightened out. Yeah. Look, I can't promise you I'll be perfect, okay? I mean, I'll try, but as I've been saying all along, I don't think I'm good enough for Jesus, okay? <laughs> you think we're perfect? <laughs> We've just given up on every, everybody's week without Jesus. That's right. We've just given up on trying to live a good life on our own. We've turned our life over to him and are allowing him to live through us. We can't live this life without the help of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He knew what our lives would be like, but he chose to die anyway. Listen, Deidre, when we mess up, we simply go to him for forgiveness and ask. We're strength. And he does? Every single time. Ever since the day I gave Jesus my heart, he promised me that nothing would ever separate me from his love. 
my sin and my shame at the foot of the cross. I would have done so much earlier. Thank you for introducing me to Jesus. And I didn't know what experience, how awesome it was like until I came and surrendered my life to him. His grace and mercy is so amazing. Yes. Yes. You were right. God spoke to me and I think I know his purpose for my life. And I had my priorities all messed up. But for now on, I'm going to put God first. Oh. You know, guys, I needed to be reminded that he didn't die just for my sins, but for my healing as well. Thank you for inviting me to go with you today. <laughs> I'm so glad for all of you. God is so good. <laughs> hey, it's not over. We've got one more place to visit. We have an even greater reason to celebrate and worship. More than the cross? Yes. <laughs> After Jesus was crucified... His friends buried his body in a tomb, and the Romans sealed it with a heavy stone and placed some guards there. <laughs> but early on Sunday morning, Jesus proved his victory over death and the grave. Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. That stone rolled away to reveal an empty tomb. The cross holds the promise 
that we can be forgiven of our sins. And that empty tomb assures us that because he lives, we can live in heaven for eternity. Listen, death has no power over us anymore. <laughs> yes, this is where we celebrate the victory Jesus won. Yes. This is where we worship him and look forward to thanking him forever for the gift of eternal life. Woo! Hallelujah! Jesus is alive! Woo! testimonies that you've heard on this platform tonight are not just an act there have been those that are here that have experienced the burden of sin we all have and have laid it at the foot of the cross the healing you heard about that's for real the life has totally changed so many on this stage that's for real it's not just a play we wanted you to know that no matter where you've been or what you've done, you can lay it all at the foot of the cross. If you're not saved tonight, we want you to come to know Jesus. 
He promised, he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. And I know the Holy Spirit is drawing right now because that's how we come to him. He said, you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you. And he's touching your heart right now. And we're giving you an opportunity to say, Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life. Maybe you're serving the Lord, but you're carrying burdens and cares that the Apostle Peter said, cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. And I want you to know we serve a living God, and we have a reason to celebrate. Church and life is not dead and dry because we are infused with the power of the Holy Spirit, and we're happy to tell you that this risen Christ wants to take up residence in your heart and life. Would you stand with us tonight? And I just want to give you an opportunity. You say, well, I can't come down there in front of all those people. Come on. He walked that road to the cross for you. The least you can do is step forward and say, Lord, I want you to be Lord of my life. I want you to come into my life. I, I just invite you tonight to not worry about what your friends think, but celebrate this Easter with the living Christ in your life. Would you come? I'm going to pray, and there are people up here that will pray with you, whatever your need is. Uh, there's prayer partners. There are pastors in this place that would be happy to pray with you tonight. Would you come while we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for your shed blood. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have changed our lives, that you've given us eternal life. And our life is not just in this life only, but we have eternal hope in you. Father, by your Spirit, we thank you for those who you're drawing to you tonight. In Jesus' name, would you come? Thank you, Jesus. Somebody asked a friend next to you, if you want to go pray, I'll go with you. Amen. Aren't you glad we serve a living Savior? Amen. Hallelujah. While you're standing, I invite you to dance with us, to worship with us, to shout with us as we do that last song again, because forever he is alive. Amen. Somebody give him a shout of praise.